Welcome to Community Meditation. My name is Jonna, and this is a free live streamed weekly meditation gathering. While we're waiting for the others to get started, um, I'm sure all of you have had a long day and you're feeling a little tired, so why don't you stand up and do a little bit of stretching, some forward bends, and also some nice neck rolls really slowly. This helps to align the spine. I think most of us end up accumulating a lot of tension in the shoulders throughout the day. And I find that these neck rolls can really help to bring things into alignment. Doing them sort of forces the shoulders to slide down your back. The heart to open and the chest even to lift towards the sky. Some nice shoulder shrugs always help too. You rolling the shoulders back and forward. Good. So tonight's conversation will be about what we call dullness. And dullness is the opposite side of the coin from monkey mind, which is what we talked about last week. So if you missed that one, you can find the recordings on our YouTube channel. Um, I'll paste the link in the description box below um, and look for the one called monkey mind. Basically, monkey mind is when the mind is really busy and it's uncomfortable to meditate because it feels as though we're being pulled in a million different directions. Dullness is when we're feeling really lethargic, really tired, even sleepy. But it's also that feeling of checking out. And what I noticed is that a lot of people come to my classes with the idea that the purpose of the meditation is to check out, to find a place of dullness. And this isn't accurate. We want to find balance between monkey mind and dullness. Just like you want to find dullness in your posture, I'm sorry, balance in your posture, you want to find balance in all aspects of your practice. And as you become more aware throughout your development in meditation, then you'll notice that you can sort of travel between monkey mind and dullness until you find the midpoint of balance. The balance feels like you're aware. It feels like you are engaged in the practices. You feel energized without feeling anxious. It's really a pleasant place to be. The problem with dullness is that we're not really cultivating what the practices are here to give us. And these meditation practices develop awareness so that we can see that there is something beneath the experiences, beneath the projections which we are responding to day to day, moment to moment. And when we can connect with that awareness, the ground of all, then our responses to situations really change. We also begin to see that there is more going on than the projections. Posture is one way to awaken the body, which is why I suggested doing some stretching in the beginning tonight. I like forward bends, I like neck rolls and shoulder shrugs to help engage the parts of the body that I notice become tight and tense during meditation. So I recommend those. If you find that sitting cross-legged doesn't work for your body because um, your muscles are too tight, try doing pigeon pose as a way to stretch out the muscles that are probably giving you the problem. It won't happen overnight, but if you do pigeon, you know, every night or a few times a week, you'll notice that you can sit longer in meditation more comfortably. People ask, well, can I lie down? 
Sure, you can lie down, but the risk is that you move into this place of dullness or sleepiness. We don't want to do that. Then your time in meditation is really a waste of your time because you're not doing the practices properly. Sitting in a chair is okay. If you are sitting in a chair, scoot your, your tush forward on the chair so that your back isn't resting up against the back of the chair. If you're resting against the back of the chair, there's the, um, the tendency to sort of slouch and allow the body to collapse. So sitting cross-legged on the floor or in a chair, supporting your own body, aligning the spine, And if you're sitting on a meditation cushion, that's great. If you don't have a meditation cushion, you can try rolling up a blanket and putting that underneath your bottom. A pillow from your sofa or your bed is probably a little bit too soft to give you the lift that your body will need to find proper alignment. So I like rolling up, blank, uh, rolling up a blanket so that you've got a little bit of lift and then the outsides of the shins are making contact with the floor. And as this happens, you might feel like you're leaning forward. That's just fine. Then you'll roll the shoulder blades back. And doing so creates what we call an S curve in the back. The shoulder blades feel as though they're just sliding down the back. The heart is lifted. Chin is slightly tilted towards your chest. If you're doing this with me, you're probably noticing, wow, my body feels aligned. I feel strong. I feel stable. I feel like I could sit here for a really long time. That's the place of balance. Your muscles are engaged. That's a part of being alert. That balance point between monkey mind and dullness. With muscles engaged and heart open, spine aligned, you're getting plenty of room in the body for the breath. And this will help to keep you alert because your body will be getting enough oxygen. If you're hunched over, the space in your lungs is compressed, your oxygen intake is limited, in fact, you're probably cycling through old air and not getting enough oxygen for your muscles. And this could cause you to fall asleep. And it might even activate your stress response, like there's an emergency, why am I not getting enough oxygen? So posture is so important to finding this balance between monkey mind and dullness. So as you're sitting here, you're strong but relaxed, alert, aware, but not anxious. Eyes are soft, gaze is downward. If you've had a really long day and you are just tired, one way to keep yourself awake through the meditation is to be sure that you're sitting in this way, strong and alert, and that the eyes are open. If you close the eyes, of course you're gonna fall asleep if you're tired. So the eyes resting, the gaze resting downward. And the more tired you are, the more you want to lift the gaze. So starting at about resting the gaze two feet in front of you on the floor. That's if you're, you know, you're pretty awake, you're pretty comfortable with doing the meditation. If you're feeling really sleepy and you feel yourself dozing off throughout the meditation, lift the gaze gradually until about eye level. You don't want to go above eye level. And just find the point that keeps you alert, aware. Our palms are resting down. Palms up is really energizing. And for the purposes of our practices, we want to relax. So this helps to sort of slow down the information intake. With palms up, you're taking in all kinds of information that could disrupt the meditation. So we rest palms down on the knees, or if you're sitting in a chair on the thighs. And there's a great infographic on our Facebook group. 
So if you're still unsure about the posture and how to sit for these meditations, then after the meditation tonight, go and check out that infographic and practice with your posture throughout this week. Doing things like pigeon stretch will really go a long way to um, training your body to sit like this. But really the only way to be able to sit like this for long periods of time is by doing it incrementally for more and more time. And then it seems like we hit like a point where then we could just sit like this forever. That's after many hours of sitting like this though. If your legs are flapping up and not contacting, making contact with the floor, then give yourself a little bit of support underneath the thighs or the knees because you'll become really tired trying to hold those legs up in the air. How's everybody feeling? Alert, comfortable, relaxed, ready to meditate. So let's cultivate the attitude of bodhicitta. This is one thing that separates the practices that we're doing here as a group from some of the other practices that are out there or things you might listen to with your headphones on you know, as you doze off, right? These practices are designed to do more than just give us relaxation or stress reduction. The intention behind these practices is that it awakens something within us. It awakens the wish for all beings to be well, all beings equally. And right now for most of us, we don't really have this wish, even though it might sound like it's a good idea. We, just in hearing it, we might say, oh, sure, I can sort of have that wish for all beings to be well equally. But think about just your day-to-day -day habits. I'll use my dog, Johnny, as an example, since you're all getting to know him. And when we're at the dog park, I can't take my eyes off of him. I think he's the cutest dog in the park. Next best is, next best is any kind of Mastiff breed I find really interesting. And then maybe all the big dogs. The little dogs, I could, you know, take them or leave them. They're kind of, I hear them, I see them running around, but my focus, my heart is open for the one that I love, the one that I know so well. This is not an ad, a true attitude of bodhicitta. If I had like real bodhicitta, I would be just enthralled with all of the animals that were running around in the dog park, as well as the people. So if you look at your dear ones, and you think, oh, I love you so much. And you look at the rest of the people and there's a difference between how much you love your dear ones and how much you love the other people. Then there's something to work towards. So if you're at the place where you have this wish, like, yeah, I'd really like to be one of those people like Dr. King or Mother Teresa or Gandhi or the Dalai Lama or Jesus. We have so many examples of benevolence for us to, to learn from. If you think that would be that would be really great if you could have this feeling of equanimity towards all beings, then right there you have what we call bodhicitta aspiration. So you aspire to have this attitude of bodhicitta. If at this point you're feeling like, my life is very busy, I don't have time for anything else, I don't really want to work on that whole bodhicitta thing, then you aspire to have bodhicitta aspiration. We're all much happier when we have this feeling. It's our limiting beliefs about ourselves and other people that cause our suffering. It's a belief in the projections that causes suffering. And what we're doing in these practices is we are learning to break down that limiting belief system, the habitual patterns of thought that are a part of the limiting beliefs. We're breaking those patterns, breaking those habits. And what's revealed to us is our innate goodness. Once we recognize our own, we can then see it in others. And these really special people I mentioned earlier, like Dr. King and the Dalai Lama, these people we call spiritual benefactors because they show us what's possible. And they are kind of holding the door open for us to come to this realization. So when we sit for these practices, our intention is that what we're doing here is helping not only us, but will help 
all beings. I promise you the stress reduction, the better health, greater patience, peak performance, all of that will come as you do the practices, probably even more so than some of the other types of meditation that are out there. These practices are also directly awakening compassion. We have lots of reward systems in the brain for compassion. So compassion is something our bodies want. It feels really, really good and it serves society. So these limiting beliefs, right? Let's talk about those a little bit tonight in our practice. Throughout tonight's meditation, I want you to kind of keep in the back of your mind this idea of balance between monkey mind and dullness. If you feel yourself going in either direction, have that awareness sort of move you in the direction you should be going in, right? Feeling too dull, lift the gaze, straighten the body, become more aware. Monkey mind, you can soften the gaze a little bit, be sure the palms are resting down. Befriend the monkey like we talked about last week. We're going to work with befriending the feelings that are arising because that's the next thing that's probably going to give you some trouble in the meditations. So right now, with palms resting on knees in your meditation posture, you have this attitude that what I'm doing here tonight benefits not only me, but hopefully all beings. You feel the energy of all of the other meditators who have joined us, this beautiful global community. As I watch the statistics, I'm always amazed to see that we have people from the other side of the world joining us. And this group grows more and more every week. As you feel this connection, Notice the feeling this gives you. Maybe kind of pleasurable, warm. Maybe you feel warmth in your heart. Now engaging handshake practice. as if shaking hands with this feeling, open attitude, one of hospitality, and noticing what other feelings are there. Maybe there's a little too much tension somewhere in your body. Greet that feeling of maybe burning or cramping with a handshake. Notice what arises. Maybe you notice you're feeling a little uncertain. If this is your first time joining community meditation, you're wondering, am I doing this right? Just imagine that you're shaking hands with that feeling. And then look to see what other feelings are present in your body right now. Seeing if you can greet each feeling with that same attitude of hospitality. The pleasurable feelings, the ones that you think you shouldn't be having. We're welcoming all feelings. Greeting each one with warmth, kindness. Saying hello. Looking, to, looking around to see 
what other feelings are there? Maybe you notice that your neck is starting to sort of roll back. That's pretty common. You feel heat or pinching in the shoulders and neck. Greet those feelings. Realign the body. you're not feeling anything at all, label this as numbness. Greet the numbness with a handshake. And allow the feelings beneath that feeling to reveal themselves. Good. Now taking a break, lifting the gaze, noticing how you're feeling, maybe shaking out the body if you're feeling tight. What you just did is real meditation and you can use handshake practice as your daily practice or you can use it um, in tandem with the benefactor's meditation. Handshake practice is so valuable because it helps us to become comfortable with the feelings that we're having. And right about now, I know some people start to get a little bit confused because we might have heard someplace or sort of feel trained by the media to move away from the bad feelings towards the good feelings, right? Move away from fear towards love. And from this perspective, these practices are rooted in Tibetan Buddhist traditions. From this perspective, there's no like good or bad. We don't want to run from one thing to another. What we're learning to realize is that all feelings are equal. What might help you to practice this is to see if you can feel the feelings as vibration. So tingling in your stomach, oh, that's sort of a fast high vibration maybe. If you feel something more towards the root, maybe that feels slower, heavier. So maybe be feelings that we would label as like anxiety or groundedness, right? See if you can just sort of recognize these are just vibrations in my body, a part of the human experience, and I'm greeting each one with a handshake. The numbness, so many people feel numb, like, oh, I'm not having any feelings. I must be meditating really well. That's not really how it works. It's not that you have found this place of bliss. It's that you're feeling numb. So you label the numbness, and more than likely, there are feelings beneath the numbness, feelings that have just been packed down so deep. We haven't explored them. We haven't provided the space to explore these feelings in perhaps many years. So you label the feeling of numbness and then you leave space for anything else to arise. We're not searching for good feelings or bad feelings. We're remaining open and whatever arises, we shake hands with it. Just like you would shake hands with a stranger, that like kind of open feeling that you have, um, no expectation, you just say hello and then look to see who else is there, like you're the host of a party. Doing this is 
getting us comfortable with all feelings equally, rather than having preference for the good feelings over the bad feelings. So if you're noticing the tendency to encourage certain feelings over other ones, relax that tendency and create an open space for all feelings to arise. We're gonna try it again for just three minutes, okay? So sitting in a relaxed way with your back comfortably straight, chin is slightly tilted towards your chest, eyes are soft, gaze is downward, palms are resting on your knees, No fancy breathing, no attempt to like zen out. We're curious about what's happening in our body, in our experience. So just begin to explore. Creating space for feelings to emerge. When you notice a feeling, greet it as if you were shaking hands with it. And allow any feelings beneath that feeling to arise. Greeting the next feeling with the same calm, kind attitude. If you notice that you, be, you have become enmeshed in one feeling, be wrapped up in a story or explanation for that feeling, simply look around and see what other feelings are present and greet one of those feelings. We're not trying to make feelings go away or resolve feelings. We're just greeting them. Good. Lift the gaze. Notice how you're feeling right now. How would your life be if you had this feeling when you answer your phone, when you greet a client or step into a meeting, when you say hello to your children or your family? And it only took a few minutes so this week, practice handshake. Whenever you have just a couple of minutes, check in and greet the feelings that are present. When you're meditating for longer periods of time, find balance between monkey mind and dullness. And use your posture as, as the practice in finding that balance. Thank you all for being here tonight. Let's dedicate the merit that we've generated. So this is just like blowing out the candles on your birthday cake. Probably not like you did it this year, more like when you were about five years old and you really believed that if you blew out all the candles, you would get a pony, right? So we really believe that with the intention we can dedicate the merit, we can give it away for the benefit of all beings. If you'd like, put your hands in prayer for this part, like scooping up a beautiful lotus flower, 
touching the fingertips, holding the delicate flower between the palms of your hands, bringing it to your heart. And as I sound the bell, make the wish to dedicate the merit with the deepest sincerity. Thank you so much for being here. I look forward to seeing you next week. Have a great week.